Last year I made a video comparing my experience with Unreal and Unity. At the time, I was getting tired of working with blueprints, having to right-click, find a node, add it, click and drag it into place, hook up everything that you want to do with it, and that for simple things like adding two numbers together, it takes such a long time. Where, if I move to more traditional coding, it wouldn't even take more than a second, saving me a huge amount of time in the long term. At that time, the choice was between C++ or C Sharp, and we all know what I ended up going with. I think it was a good choice, but still, aside from it being a little bit more my jam to program with traditional code, I like so many other things about Unreal more. The material editor, the particle system, and of course in more recent times, things like Nanite and Lumen Global Illumination. So I took the task upon myself of learning C++. And now that I have a decent grasp on C Sharp, it didn't seem nearly as intimidating. So after about a month of learning C++ for Unreal in my spare time, let's push myself to the test. I'm going to make the same game in both engines and see which one I preferred working with in the end. Should I end up liking Unreal more? There is a non-zero chance that I will rebuild my whole current long-term project in Unreal after a half a year of work inside Unity. So what game will we be making? Well, I've been falling back into a old habit of mine, RuneScape. This game is kind of like smoking. You can say you have stopped, but you've probably only started taking a break. Anyway, one of my favorite things to do in RuneScape is mining, because it's as close as an idle game as you're gonna get here, and I can have it open on my second monitor while I do some work. So let's try to create a small game that mimics the mining system from RuneScape. Simple, easy, but hopefully fun. For this project, I will use any asset I own in either asset store or any asset that I can use for free. I don't intend on spending a whole lot of time modeling and making animations because that's not going to change in my workflow no matter which engine I use. Anyway, enough talk, let's get started. I know Unity a little bit better, so I wanted to start with that. I used Mixamo to get a decent looking character and animations to use. That way I can use the same character for both engines. Using the terrain feature, I made a quick terrain to test and walk around in, and I wrote a couple of lines of code that would make the camera follow around the player, and let me walk around by clicking on the screen. For now, that's all there is to it. Eventually I'll probably have to check what objects I'm clicking on to know whether or not I should be walking over to it or walking over a mine or if I'm close enough already, just do the mining. But for now, this works well enough and it only took me about 40 minutes or so, which included a long time searching for the animations and characters, so it's probably closer to 20 to 25 minutes of actual work in Unity. Now let's see how implementing movement worked in Unreal. And that's not really a 100% fair comparison, because Unreal has a top-down game template, pre-made. So, the moment I loaded up the project, I could move around no problem. Setting up the animations also was similarly easy, although I did have to remove the axe from the character, which was a bit of a bother. Unlike in Unity, where I could just disable that specific object under that specific bone, Unreal didn't really let me do that directly. But to be fair to Unreal, that was likely an issue with the model itself and not with the engine. Next up, we'll have to make the actual ore objects to place in the world. I'm thinking that should all be one prefab or blueprint that I can change its looks and yielding item from, depending on a simple enum. That way it's design friendly and hopefully also easy to scale up if I were to want to create a full game out of this. Not that I will, but if you're going to test the engines, we should at least test them in a somewhat realistic workflow. So once again, let's start with Unity. Here we get into the asset store differences. I'm using models I downloaded of the Unity asset store for free, and what I want is a rock that I can enable and disable some gemstones on. While this pack has a rock that looks great for that, it's one whole mesh, so I'll have to slap together some combination of my own instead. Altogether, making the rocks wasn't too big a deal. They have the gems on them, you can mine them, they disappear after a few seconds, and then they reappear after a few more seconds. Now, these rocks need to give actual items, meaning we need some sort of inventory system 
So, because I don't feel like getting into that right away, let's set up the rocks in Unreal now. The biggest upside to doing this first in Unity is that any bugs, or more specifically flaws in logic, presented themselves there, where I'm a little bit more confident in my ability to bug test. So, when I got to Unreal, I just had to recreate it. Which still took longer than I would have expected. It's mostly tinkering around with the way I had to call functions on a timer. When the mining starts, I have to call a function after X amount of seconds to hide the rocks, and eventually add items into the inventory and such. And then that function calls another function on a timer, which has to put the rocks back so the player can mine them again. This wouldn't have been an issue, were it not for the fact that the rocks function also needs to tell the player to stop mining, which means it needs a reference to the player. Which means I need to be able to call a function with parameters on a timer. Long story short, that threw me for a bit of a loop. Now, could I have just called get player controller to get a pointer reference? Or added a variable to every rock that always has a pointer to the player controller? Yes, of course I could have done that. But there's no need for every single rock in the level to always have a connection to the player, only for it to be used one time in a single action. Besides, I wanted to learn how to do this. So yeah, that did take me much longer than it did in Unity, but in the end, both systems work more or less the same way and are now functioning. Which brings me to making an inventory. I'll be honest, I could put a lot of effort into coding a whole ass inventory system, and if I were to make this a broader game, I would, as being able to add extra items to scale up the game would be a requirement. But for this tiny project, I only have to keep track of three items that I can hold at any given time. Those being the three different types of ores. So instead, I'm just going to keep track of those with three simple integers. As well as a total integer that checks if the three different ores added together don't exceed a inventory limit. It's a horribly hard-coded system, but also something that took me literally only five minutes to add in both engines. So we'll make do with it for now. There's no real UI for the inventory either, just some numbers and a progress bar that shows how full your inventory is in total. Although I have to admit, it did take me a fair bit longer in Unreal, but that was mostly due to me having to figure out how to fix the build issues I was having because I didn't include the UMG module and getting the enums to work properly was also a bit of a pain at first. Now we get to the final bits of actual coding we need to do, and before I even start working on this, I realize that, much like many things in this video, the way I'm going to do this is super non-scalable. Because as it stands, in both engines, the character checks what object it clicks on. If it's a rock, it'll start mining when it's near it. But now I have to add a second clickable object. I should have made a parent class that the character can just look out for, and then have children of that parent class all have different functionality. That way, the player doesn't need to know every single possible option for a clickable object. We only have two objects right now, but we could add a third, something like a door that would require money, which I probably won't do, since that doesn't really add any insight to this experiment anyway for comparing both engines, and I already kind of shot myself in the foot with the way I coded things. So it's not that big a deal for now, but for a full game, this would seriously suck. This is a mistake I made in both engines, and the solution would work the same as well. But with Unreal, having both actor classes and component classes, it feels more intuitive to use that kind of inheritance. I want to be clear, there's no rational reason that makes it make more sense in Unreal compared to Unity. I could very well derive all the relevant components from a parent class and that would work great, but the fact that Unreal's way of doing things allows for both actor classes to have inherent functionality, as well as separate components, that just clicks a little bit better in my mind. Now we're going to make things look pretty. Both asset stores have a good number of assets, but Unreal has the massive advantage of Quixel Megascans. Although, with how things seem to be going, it looks like Epic's new upcoming marketplace will also work with other engines in the pretty near future. Or maybe even already by the time this video goes up. 
On top of that, I actually had trouble finding a forge on the Unreal Marketplace. One that I could use for free, anyway. So I might have just copied over the FBX file I found in the Unity store, which... That didn't work well. It could have worked, but it would have been very bothersome. So, you know what? Here. A cylinder. That'll do nicely. So, there we have it. In the end, the same game in both engines. Of course, it lacks a lot of polish. But you can also see that the Unreal version, out of the box, just looks better. I might have spent a good amount more time making this with Unreal, but that's because I spend a lot of time troubleshooting programming things. But beyond that, Unreal just makes it so easy to make something that just works and looks good at the same time. Now, I'm sure that in Unity, given some time, we could end up with things that are pretty damn close as a result. But that's not the point, because if I'm going to spend time polishing things up, I could also spend more time in Unreal to widen that gap again. I'm sure on a huge scale, those differences become smaller and smaller. But as a solo indie dev, having all the tools and the developing technologies that Unreal offers, now that I don't have nightmares about C++ anymore, it's just very interesting. So before I move on development on my own game, I'm going to remake the bare bones basics of that in Unreal 2 and see if that makes me feel better about the game itself. If I run into any issues when scaling up into a real game like that, I can always go back to working on it in Unity, where I already have a lot of work and code. But it wouldn't be honest to myself if I didn't give it a try to see whether or not my game would be improved by running on Unreal instead of Unity. And in the end, that's what we want, isn't it? A game that's as good as possible. So next time, it's time to port over my game into Unreal and see how we feel about it. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.